Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve. And I'm Scott. And we're having a good laugh here. We are. This is going to be a comical <laughs> article. A lot of butchering. We're backyard talk. musings. Together we are. And, and science, science and technology. Don't shoot the messenger, all yeah, right? Please. We're not the experts. Yeah. <laughs> California's eastern Sierra Nevada. Beautiful land out there. All yeah. across the eastern yeah, Sierra. It's right in the middle of Mono, Mono County. Yeah, is home to Mono Lake, renowned for its striking beauty and unique ecosystem. Its hypersaline and alkaline waters support unique life forms, including brine shrimp, shrimp and alkali flies, which thrive in conditions that will be uninhabitable to most organisms. Recently, scientists from the UC Berkeley, UC California, Berkeley, have discovered a microscopic creature living in this extreme environment that could offer clues to the origins of complex life. Would you like to know more? So what's interesting about this lake is that it it's surrounded by alpine, beautiful lakes and streams, fresh water. And fresh, there are three primary um, sources of water that flow into this lake. They're fresh, they're, like I said, they're fresh water. But yet this is a brine what are the three? Water. What are the three? Uh, the melts, Rush Creek, the melt Rush Creek, Levining Creek, and I think the other one is Mill Creek. And it's from like rain, snow melt, snow yeah, melt, yeah, springs, uh, alpine lakes, snow melt. But it's all fresh water. But yet this lake, and it's a huge lake. It's got to be the largest lake in that area, man-made lake. I mean, uh, natural lake in that area, uh, other than like you know maybe south of Lake Tahoe. It's it's a huge huge body of water, but it's brine. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. No fish in it. So, anyway, uh, this creature, a single-celled, oh, jeez, choaf, choafana flagellate species. Say it like Daffy just, Duck. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I can barely say it like Scott you <laughs> Offers unprecedented insights into the ev evolutionary transition from single-celled organisms to multicellular life. The species' unique microbiome and symbiotic relationship with bacteria provide clues into how early life forms adapted to early envi or extreme environments and formed partnerships that contribute contributed to the development of animal life the groundbreaking research not only enriches our understanding of evolution but also underscores the ecological significance of mono lakes extraordinary ecosystem so this is uh, applicable like io i think is the frozen moon around uh, uh jupiter and they think that underneath there's water and there might be organisms like this huh? that are thriving under there. Okay. So that's why they're talking about uh, the building blocks here. If you've ever, well, we're going to talk about them, but they have some really, really weird for, uh, formations and tell, tell greenery. Us, tell us about the uh, seagulls. Seagulls, yeah. So, yeah. So 90% of all the seagulls that live in California, and I would see probably Nevada, parts of Nevada, because this is very close to the Nevada border. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe even as far over as Utah are born it on an island in, in Seagulls. Mono Lake. Seagulls. seagulls yeah, yeah. What did I say? On that island. Did I say eagles or no, seagulls? seagulls yeah. yeah, seagulls. On that island, island that's in the lake. Yeah. Yeah. There's one island. Yeah. yeah. And you think, why are they born there? Well, they, they probably they got it. Like salmon. They, they come back. They do come back. And they've got these brine shrimp that live in this lake that are delicious. just. Delicious. Delicious. I guess they like them. Shrimp. I guess they like them. So. Yeah. Is that me? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Mono Lake is a geological marvel characterized by its hypersaline, alkaline waters and iconic tufa formations. They're fascinating. Yeah? Yeah. These extreme conditions have cultivated a thriving ecosystem, especially adapted organisms like brine shrimp and alkali flies. The lake's ability to sustain, sustain life in one of the most extreme environments in the world. It's how, how high up is it? Uh, you know, it's, I is bet it's there? around six, yeah, probably about six, 7,000 feet, somewhere in there. Yeah, that's... You got, you got a, that's an effort to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the lake's ability to stay in life in one of the most extreme environments of the world makes it an ideal site for the study of evolutionary biology and adaptation. You see, Berkeley researchers discovered an extraordinary single celled organism in Mono Lake's waters, a Chuano flagellate. Chuano. Chuano, okay. yeah. Flagellate, which the scientists name. Well, maybe this was your barbacoa. Bar <laughs> barbacoa. Baroeca mono sierra. Choanoflagellates are of great interest for evolutionary studies as they are the closest living relatives of animals and provide insight in the transition from single cell to multicellular life. In contrast to other 
choanoflagellates that feed on bacteria. Baroeca, Bar how is that? Baroeca. Baroeca monosierra forms a stable physical association with its bacterial partners. This has made it at the uh, made it the simplest known organism to host a microbiome, offering scientists a new opportunity to study early interactions between single-celled organisms and bacteria. The symbiotic relationship between Barrio, Barroeca monosierra and its bacterial partners offers insights into how early life forms may have developed complex microbiomes. These relationships probably played a pivotal role in the evolution of molecular organisms, including animals. Hmm. The extreme environment of Mono Lake, marked by high salinity and deadly substances like arsenic and cyanide, might have propelled the evolution. So don't go swimming, right? Yeah, I wouldn't suggest yeah. that. Might have propelled the evolution of Baroeca monosierra. This choanoflagellate's ability to thrive in harsh environments underscores the resilience and adaptability of early life forms. The choanoflagellate was first discovered almost a decade ago when Daniel Richter, any relation to the Richter scale? I don't know. Okay. Then a graduate student at UC Berkeley collected water samples during a climbing trip. When he looked at it under the microscope, he observed large colonies of nearly 100 identical cells that had formed hollow spheres, a structure reminiscent of animal embryos known as blastulas. Okay. Graduate student Kaylee Hake then revived frozen samples of Barro Sierra or Barroeca Monosierra and made an ex uh, exciting discovery. Bacterial DNA was present inside the hollow spheres formed by the colonies. This was the first documented case of bacteria living with choanoflagellate colonies in instead of being consumed by them. Mm. Um, is that ill? No. Just skip on. that. Yeah. Don't even put use. Yeah. Banfield? No? Yeah. Banfield, a pioneer in, oh, geez, metagenomics, geonomics, geo, metagenomics, okay, at UC Berkeley, collaborated with King's team to determine which bacterial species are present in mono lake water and within choanoflagellates colonies. The distinct bacterial populations inside, inside the colonies indicate that some species thrive better with their oxygen-deprived oxygen interiors. It's not yet clear whether Baroeca monosierra farms bacteria for consumption or provides them refuge from Mono Lake's extreme conditions, but future studies promise to reveal more about these interactions. Previous studies already demonstrated that bacteria can influence choanoflagellate behavior, such as mating and colony formation. The findings from Mono Lake highlight the role of microbial interactions during early evolution. The researchers believe studying Baroeca monosierra will provide answers to fundamental questions about how eukaryotes and bacteria co-evolved. These insights might clarify how human micro microbiomes originated and the complex animal-bacteria relationships are seen today. Uh, I guess if you're a biology major, this is fascinating. Yeah, so I, I don't know all the stuff that they're talking about here but that lake is just fascinating i mean if you it's it's about halfway in between uh bishop california and um Mammoth. like the nevada border uh, oh okay. Topaz, topaz lake nevada border okay so uh yeah it's a little bit north of, of uh, mammoth the mammoth lakes area oh wait yeah north of mammoth lakes and but it's got some interesting geography to it these tufas i mean if you if you uh, just Google Mono Lake, it's and it you can go out there in canoes and stuff. Easy yeah, you access. can drive down to them. Yeah, you can drive down to them. But you don't want to swim in there because of the arsenic. Yeah, I, would, the... I wouldn't swim in it. Yeah. But you can go out in kayaks and, and, and small boats, I think. Pretty sure you can do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I recommend you see it at least one time up close. Pretty fascinating. Hmm. And there's a couple of pretty good sized islands on it in there. Like I said, one of the islands is where all these seagulls are. Um, they mate and mating. Yep. Yeah. They get, it on. they get it on. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Thank you.